Welcome back to another episode of the Coach's Corner Podcast. I've spent the last, uh, I don't want to exaggerate this, this is probably an under-exaggeration, probably three hours just like consuming Nick's stuff here, and I'm excited for the treat we have because as you know, strategy is one thing. We can give you the exact steps, the exact tools. Do this. Here's the exact blueprint. Here is everything you need to do to move things forward, but if you don't got that mindset piece set in place, and I think Nick just exudes this get it done move fast and I'm, I'm just really excited to get into it nick welcome to the show no i appreciate it man i uh, i'm glad to talk about this mindset is definitely like i'd say like the bread and butter that's helped me get to where i'm at yeah um and everything else has kind of fell into place after the, the mindset was strong yeah what i'm really excited to get into and i'm going to give you a bit of an intro in a second here but what i'm really excited to get into for anyone listening who's kind of like what's this all about is at least i know for myself i used to like one thing would happen and for three days I'd be out. I was like negative and, and I just, I was like, I need to work on this thing between my ears. And that led me on a journey of, well, let me focus on, I mean, every stoicism philosophy book, which I see a lot of parallels with the stuff you teach was just like my Bible. And because of the pain I went through, I made that a big focus. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can get into the story of, of where did it really turn around for you and Usually when someone is one way so aggressively like you are, usually there's a polar opposite of a time and place where you weren't. So I'm really excited to hear that because a lot of people think that, well, I, I'm just this way. Everyone else is motivated or everyone else can do this, but I can't do it. And I'm, I'm going to take a wild guess that you're probably going to think that, that is, um, that's a false story we tell ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll 100% find that in my story. Good. Beautiful. So, so Nick, you've got bear performance nutrition. Um, last time I checked and, and how accurate the stat is, doing about $6 million in revenue, you started that out of your college, uh, college dorm room. Correct. You've got Embrace the Suck Training, which I love. Uh, that's the fitness side of things. And you just have a book. Actually, as of today, it went live 25 hours a day. That's all correct, yep. Awesome. I've, I've got three words for you. This is kind of how I like to start things off. I've got three words. Just the first thing that comes to mind with, um, with each word, and I think these are crafted in a way. I have a feeling I know some of your answers, but I'm curious what you come up with. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Shoot it. First word is pain. Uh, pain, I'd say physical and mental. Cool. Excuses. Uh, can't have them. And social media as a third one. Powerful. Beautiful. Cool. So awesome. I, I love your philosophy of, I, I see all this like going one more. And, you know, I think there was something about embrace the suck. You had one more about, about pain. I saw, I saw all these little things and it's just, you know, when I was 23, 24, I stumbled across Marcus Aurelius and then I just went down the rabbit hole of stoic philosophy. And that led me into a lot of, um, you know, the things about in, inside the military, and I know that so much of it is just like is is just is just rooted. So I'm guessing your X number of years in the early days in the military uh, really probably shaped a lot of the lens that you see life and a lot of the um, you know, a lot of the beliefs that you that you carry on that led to your success. So where? Yeah, I mean, no good. Yeah, yeah. Where where did it all start? Like where 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 did where did where did Nick's insane, insatiable drive for 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 creating the life you created, and I'm sure you've got a, a massive vision that exceeds where you are right now. Where did where did all that start? Yeah, so I mean, when I was when I was in high school, getting ready to go to college, um, I talk about this in my book. But I was like, everyone was asking me, like, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And I was like, well, I, I don't know, I, I I can't tell you that right now, but I know that like I want to go to college. I went to college for, for nutrition. I was studying nutrition and I knew I wanted to join the military. So at the time, my cousin was in, he was in the army and I saw him coming back and forth between deployments from Iraq, Afghanistan. And like I saw the way that he was respected uh, and how mm -hmm. he changed as a, as a person throughout. Mm -hmm. Like his, I was like, moral compass was just set. And I respected that a lot and I wanted to be like that. So I was like, well, Seeing the way he changed, I want to get to that same experience. Yeah. So in high school, I was like, well, I need to, I need to put myself in these experiences, and those experiences will mold my perspective of what I want to do the rest of my life and where my passion will sit. So like the first step was like, okay, I want to go to college. I want to join the military. So I joined the ROTC program at college. Uh, 
so rhythm and I was program I was in, I was really enjoying the ROTC program. And it was uh, it was between my junior and senior year of college where I had to go to this this 30 day camp that all the ROTC cadets in the nation have to go to. It's called Advanced Camp. Okay. And it's okay. in F- Fort Lewis, Washington. And up until this point, like I just viewed myself as a very average dude. Like never stood out in sports, never stood out in school, kind of just like blended in. And I went to this advanced camp and you get you get evaluated based off of all the other cadets in the nation. And that evaluation determines what you're gonna do in the military after you graduate. And I scored like top tier. Hmm. Now, not like a big deal because these evaluations are typically graded off people that have never been in the military before. It's just based off of almost your, your, your natural, but built leadership abilities. But like this built this newfound confidence in me. Yeah. At literally the day I got back from this advanced camp, I established the LLC for bear performance nutrition. Hmm. So it was like, you know, I, and I talk about this a lot. It's like, that was the moment in my life. I remember taking this yeah. massive yeah. risk, this massive jump that wasn't, over over analyzed there was no paralysis behind it and from that point on that's how i made decisions moving forward like massive action on decisions where i mitigated risk where i could but also like saw risk for what it was and kept moving forward why that gives me shivers is like nothing changed in your reality except the story that you believed and i i just i see that as such a powerful example of like one small shift which is why i love the space of always getting around people who are just like who will see my blind spots but it's just like one small shift some someone said hey you're in the top five percent nothing changed and there you go like your your trajectory for the rest of your life changed just from a story that that you rewrote or or you were you you shown some light on it's so powerful yeah it's like it, you, you always had it that's right but it's like so many people want to want to find reasons of why they why they don't have it or why they shouldn't yeah. instead of why they should. That may be one of the most powerful examples that I've heard that's just like real. It's not like fluffy, it's not fair, it's just like it's actually a very concrete examples and you can you can do that. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you that. You can you can do the work to, to rewrite those stories and beliefs. So that is so powerful. So you were told, hey, you're in the top five percent, you're like, damn, I am in the five percent. Maybe I'll I'll establish the LLC and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch, I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna be decisive, I'm gonna mitigate risk. Uh, where did it go from there? So you started the LLC. So I'm guessing you you had an idea for a product, or you just knew that you're going to create something. Just wasn't sure yet. No, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to create. Okay. So I loved like studying nutrition in college. I loved the supplement space. Um, I was really into bodybuilding at the time, putting on size and strength. And me and my buddies were living in the dorm freshman year, sophomore year. We got a house together. Junior year, I was I was in an apartment, and um, we were mixing up our own pre workout. Yeah. So we, we were spending like, you know, $35, $40 a month on pre-workout. We we're like, oh, hey, we'll all buy these ingredients in bulk, mix them up, and, you know, we'll, we'll budget. So like I went to Walmart, got like a food scale that can measure like in grams. I ordered like citrulline malate, beta alanine, caffeine, um, creatine online in bulk. Yeah. And then we mix up our own pre-workout. So here we are in the dorms. You imagine like – I got this this scale with these white powders, and I'm mixing up these powders in this scale. It probably looks like I'm dealing drugs in my apartment or my dorm room, and I'm selling. And we're like we're using this for ourselves, or we're handing it out to friends. Like, go try this pre workout. So I always loved the supplement side of performance yeah. and, and training and sports. Um, so like naturally, that's the company I wanted to start. Like I just I was so drawn to that in terms of like. These little things you can do to increase performance through training, supplementation, nutrition yeah. to get better. Yeah. And I was so attracted to that. So so how did your um, – so I'm guessing your first product must have been a, a pre-workout. Would I be right to say that? Yeah. So first product was a pre-workout. Uh, after I established the LLC, um, that summer I was starting to plan some things out. And we launched a pre-workout with a contract manufacturer. So obviously I, I had to find a con- – I couldn't make my own – supplements for people anymore i had to find a contract manufacturer um who had an FDA, and all that, yeah, yeah. fda registered facility and um i was like your typical just broke college student living like off of what i had like yeah. i remember times i mean this shows how much i loved like pre-workout i was like i remember having 30 dollars in my bank account 
and going to like the Walgreens down the street from my apartment and like spending that last thirty dollars on pre workout. Good choice. Good choice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Priorities, right? Yeah. So when I decided I want to start my company, like it things just aligned where between your my junior and senior year of college in the ROTC program, there's this military associated bank called USAA. And they offer this thing called the pre commissioning loan. So you can take up to twenty five thousand dollars out you don't make your first payment for 18 months. And it was like, I, I, I applied for this and where all my friends are taking this money out and they're you know, going on vacations, buying new cars, buying engagement rings. I was like, well, this is an opportunity for me to get money at a low interest rate. I don't have to make a payment for 18 months and I, I can fund this business. Mm. So I got approved for $20,000 and that was my money to kickstart my company, which I thought was enough, right? Uh, you know, very naive thinking I could launch a product-based business with with 20k, right? So like, I get the 20k from this bank. I work with the manufacturer. We lock down a formula. We lock down flavor. Uh, we lock down packaging. We place the production order. So I have like 12 weeks lead time. In the meantime, uh, we build a website with my buddy. My other buddy did our logo. Um, I dieted down to do a photo shoot to launch the brand and I sent out products to YouTubers, fitness YouTubers. Now like the fitness space on social media was not nearly what it was. What year is, was this? 2012? This was 2012, 2012. So like there were people on YouTube doing fitness stuff but it wasn't massive. So I sent these products to YouTubers and I was like, man, if they can just like review this pre-workout, I'll sell it all. So I told my dad, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I think I'm going to make a million dollars this year. He, he just like laughed. He was like, you know, if it was that easy, everyone would do it. I was like, all right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a million dollars. So like product rolls in and um, it gets delivered to my parents' house, which is three hours away from my college. I drive home, I pick it up, bring it up to my college apartment, which is 10 by 10 foot by 10 foot room and psychos live. I'm ready to pack orders and like nothing. Nada. Nope. Nothing for like weeks. Like one, two order here and there. So I was like, man, I got like, I got to prepare for this loan repayment coming up. So I started doing like massive steep discounts, like 50% off, 50% off, uh, buy one, get one, stuff like that to like start making some money back. Year one, we did $20,000 in revenue. Year two, $20,000 in revenue. Year three, twenty thousand dollars in revenue. Now, like there, there is a caveat to it. Um, a year after I launched the brand, I graduated college, degree in nutrition, and because I was in the ROTC program, I got shipped off to the military. So, a year after grad or a year after starting the brand, I got sent to Fort Benning, Georgia, where I was in and out of the field all the time. I did the infantry officer basic course. I did airborne school. I spent time four and a half months in ranger school because I failed some phases. Right. So I passed ranger school. And then after that year spent at Fort Benning, Georgia, I got shipped to Fort Hood, Texas. And when I got to Fort Hood, Texas, that's when I started social media. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't start social media until two after two years after starting this brand. And that's when I started seeing slow growth, not not massive growth. Um, but like I started a YouTube channel. Not to monetize or make money, but the only reason I started a YouTube channel was like, I got to Texas, I knew no one, I had all this free time because my unit was in Germany, so I had like three months till they got back. So I was like, man, I'm just gonna document like my training and my nutrition. And I slowly started building a personal brand. So like with the first, I think within the first year of having the YouTube channel, I had like 10 to 15,000 subscribers. And as subscribers grew, business grew. Mm -hmm. But nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. So it's like 2016. I'm doing like for two years at you know, from 2014 to 2016. I'm at Fort Hood, Texas. I'm an infantry platoon leader. I'm in and out of the field. I'm training all the time. I'm filming YouTube videos at night. So I'm, I'm posting like three or four YouTube videos a week. Right. And how many hours are you in the uh, like this is probably full time, if not more than full time uh, work work. And then doing stuff on the side as much yeah. as you can. So full dedication, full commitment to uh, to making it happen. With the little time that you had, you still found the time. Yeah, like during those two years, 
I, I, I did the work for say, there, you know, 5 or 6 p.m. if we weren't in the field. Mm-hmm. And then I get home and I start filming YouTube videos right away. I start filming like um, nutrition videos, training videos, just documenting stuff, editing that up, finishing up the video at night, posting it by the time I went to bed, yeah. doing yeah. it all over again. And then on the weekends, I would drive into Austin, which was like an hour away from Fort Hood, and I'd film vlogs. So I'd film like me like exploring the city. I was just trying to like find what I was supposed to figure do. Figure it with, out, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah, I was tr- figuring it out. So I did this for two years and I, I grow my platform. I start growing the brand. We still, you know, we're still under six figures a year at this point. And 2016, we get orders to go to South Korea for nine months. So I was like, man, I, I like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this brand going. Like I'm not going to be able to film videos. Um, my like my dad and brother are gonna have to ship out the orders in Pennsylvania while while I'm not in Texas anymore, which at the time was like, you know, twenty thirty orders a month. It wasn't nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. So we get sent. To, I, I'm like I'm gonna bring my camera stuff just in case. I'm gonna like I'm gonna see like feel it out. So my unit gets to South Korea and I realize well I have a lot more free time than I thought I would. You know now I'm just in a different country with less distractions. And I can work more. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to make a, a, like a bet with myself. At the time I got there, we were making like two to $3,000 a month in revenue. And I was like, within, by the time I leave South Korea in nine months, I want to make $10,000 a month in revenue. That was my goal. Mm-hmm. On track for six figures a year. So like to do this, I was like, all right, I'm not going to watch any movies. I'm not going to watch any TV. Um, in all my free time, I'm going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to read books. I'm gonna learn how to code my website. I'm gonna rebrand the company. Um, I'm gonna learn one new thing at least every single day while I'm there. I was like, if I can learn one new thing a day over the course of nine months, well, that's a lot of that's a lot of things. If I can do like add two to three new things to my like toolkit during that nine months, I'll have learned over a thousand new things. Mm. So that's what I did, and it was like head down, drive forward, and within the first ninety days of being there. We went from two thousand dollars a month in revenue to ten thousand dollars a month in revenue. Right, and that was literally just for me. Like, like my schedule for nine months there was wild. Like, I'd wake up at four a.m. and for two hours, I would talk to manufacturers and everyone back in the, in the states because of the fourteen-hour time difference. And then from six to seven thirty, I'd have my morning meet, meeting with the army and PT. And then from 7.30 to 8.30, I would go to the gym and film YouTube videos because it was the only time that no one else was there right. on post. And then from 9 till 5 or 6 p.m., if we weren't in the field, I'd do my job with the Army. And then I would film videos afterwards. I would research. I would document. I would just like try to learn and grow as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And – Korea was like the most crazy time in my life, the most productive time in my life, where I learned so much, and it completely game changed everything moving forward. So when I got to South Korea, my subscribers on YouTube were thirty thousand. When I left, it was like a hundred and five thousand. Yeah, just from documenting, like what I was doing was, and I didn't try to do this. Um, I was like one of the first like military YouTubers that was documenting this process and sharing this information. Yep. Um. But I, I, didn't, I didn't see it that way. I was like, well, I'm just going to document my life and document what I'm doing. Yeah. I didn't think it was anything crazy. And I had one video. And this is after doing YouTube for you know, three, four years. I had one video that finally took off. And it was called A Day in the Life of an Infantry Platoon Leader. Saw that video. It was your most searched for video. I, I reversed the uh, thing. I think it had four million, but I could be way off now. It Maybe like, it had 40 or four. Or, it had a lot. It was like one, It's only like 1.6 okay. million. Yeah, yeah. But it went from like – it took my – like I gained like a million views on this video in like a month. Yeah. And it took me from 30,000 subscribers to 80,000 subscribers in a month. Yeah. And that started picking up the traction where people were like, oh, here's this guy in South Korea documenting his process, building his brand, being in the infantry, and like being a leader. And that's what started picking up steam. Mm. There, there's so much to unpack. I've just been taking notes to make sure that no one is missing – some of this stuff. But just to recap, before we move on, uh, I mean, huge things here, but I think the biggest thing was you leapt 
without knowing what's going to happen. If you try to plan everything out like everyone's trying to do, what ended up happening? You said you, you didn't really know manufacturers. You kind of got this loan. You didn't know how to do the FDA thing. You probably didn't know the legal side of it, but you were like, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll build it as we grow. Uh, and it obviously worked out for you like it does for anyone with a full commitment. Uh, you know, you mentioned things like like your full commitment and getting resourceful with your time, uh, with how you're structuring your time, commitment on I remember this doing this too is one of my mentors was like for a week track every hour what you did and at the end of the week let's talk about it and I had like 30 hours of wasted time and I was making the excuse of I don't have time to build yeah. my business I had like 30 hours it was really stupid stuff like three commutes a day when it could have been one and I became a a a freak on like am I making the most use of my time and then when I book time off I'm able to enjoy it because I know I make the most use of my time so it sounds like there was you know that happened to you you got serious. It sounds like you just got fully committed to the mission, to the vision. And anything that moved you closer to it, you kept. And anything that didn't move you closer to it, uh, it sounds like you took a pretty drastic approach, at least from the sound of it, of removing it and being like, you know what, this is my shot. Uh, I'll do it. Make 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 a way out of no way type of thing. Yeah, I think like, there's two two moments in my life that really stand out that built the foundation of, of the way I kind of live my life, of going all in. So like the first was ranger school. Like ranger school is a, a place where like there's no distractions from the outside world. You don't have your phone. You don't talk to your family, your friends, unless it's by letter. You're focused on one specific thing and mission, and that is to pass the school and get the ranger tab. And it's a 61 day course, hmm. but because I recycled phases, I was there for 141 days. Hmm. But like I I was all in of of graduating that course. So like I realized, well, when, and when I go all in on this, the result is I succeed. Korea was that same thing. It's like, you know, I, I have this time that I can work now. I'm going to go all in. And when I go all in, I succeed. Mm -hmm. And those were two, two moments in my life when I was like, okay, this is what happens when I go all in. Well, let's, let's keep doing this. Isn't it so fast? So that kind of was like the big story or the big paradigm shift. The first one was, uh, you know, well, you're in the top 5% and you're like, well, if I'm the top 5%, what else can I do? And the second one was um, when you go all in, it's kind of like your philosophy, your code. When you go all in, you see the results. So I may as well go all in on everything I do because I'll get the result. You believed it. And well, I mean, it manifested for you in a very, um, in a very real way. And it seemed to, so after that, you've got your 80,000 subscribers because uh, of that one video that got 1.3, 1.4 million views, things are moving forward. I'm guessing you're getting more orders. You're still in, you're still overseas, so you're probably kind of like, was there a fulfillment issue? Was there like, we're getting too much attention too quickly? There, I'm sure there was some problem solving there with now I have to grow a team. I need probably a space for all this. I need to, what happened then? Yeah, so I'm preparing to transition back to the United States. And at the time, my brother just graduated college recently so he was working a, a full-time job but he was like having to take off days of work when we would have too many orders come in because my dad's right. you know working a full-time job so my brother would take off work he'd stay at home he'd pack the orders that would come in ship them out um and it was getting too chaotic so i proposed to him hey why don't you move from pennsylvania move the business from pennsylvania to texas and at the time everything could fit in like a u-haul van I was like, move to Texas, move into my house, set up operations out of my house for the time being until I get home, and then we'll find a warehouse. And I was like, I can't pay you, but like, <laughs> I, I, I believe this is gonna work. So he believed in the vision, he believed in the mission of it. He quit his job, he packed the U-Haul, drove down to my house in Texas, set up operations there, and started looking for a warehouse. Um, so I'm transitioning out of South Korea, back to the States. My brother's looking for this warehouse. He finds a spot. We sign a lease. He signs it there in person. I sign it in my boxer sitting in my dorm room in South Korea. And, um, you know, I fly in from South Korea to Texas, land. My parents are there to pick us up. We drive straight to the warehouse and start working, like mm -hmm. same day, um, and just start building this warehouse out. So at this point, I have a year left in the military. And this was like another, like I thought oh, I get back from Korea, things will, will be easier, they'll settle down. No, it got even more difficult because we're growing and I'm still working a full-time job, but now the warehouse space we signed a lease for is 45 minutes away in the opposite direction. So 
you know, my schedule now is the same thing where I wake up at, you know, 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. Uh, PT, sleep in my truck from like 7.30 to 8.30 when everyone else is getting lunch. Uh, go into work. During lunch, I sleep in my truck again from like 11.30 to 12.30. After work, we weren't in the field. Drive back home, pick up my brother, drive to the warehouse, start building out the warehouse, filming content, documenting, um, doing this till like midnight, driving 45 minutes back home, editing that content, having it uploaded on YouTube by like 1.30, 2 a.m., sleep for an hour or two, and do the whole thing the next day. Yeah. Like this is for yeah. a year, but at no point where we like, oh, this sucks. Like this is hard. This is like, no, we were like so driven off of yeah. pure passion that it's like, we didn't, we didn't feel the need to sleep. We didn't want to sleep. We like, we were so focused on what we were doing. It was like, how many, how many more videos can we get up? How much more content can we produce? How many more people can we reach? How many more people can we help? And the business was growing organically with it. It's, it's an amazing thing. What the, the thing I want to unpack or just, or just offer up is when you're that clear on your vision, your mission, and you're actually aligned with it. We've all experienced it. It's like two weeks goes by. You barely ate. You're working 18 hours a day because you're so passionate about maybe a, a, you're launching something, you're creating something. I know that I experienced that uh, many times. And it's like, but when you're trying to go against the grain or when you're looking to just make the money or when you're doing something that you're like, er, it's like it becomes... Labor, it becomes heavy work. So it sounds like you guys are in tune. You've got a vision. You've got a mission. You're loving what you're doing. Challenges, there's many of them, but you're like, eh, you know what? Like, we'll find a way. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're having fun while doing it. I'm sure it's frustrating at times, but you're finding ways around it because you've got, you got such a strong vision mission, and it's all over. If I got anything from studying your stuff on your website, it's so vision, mission heavy. Your entire website yep. even starts with that. Like, here is the mission. I forget exactly what it said, but I remember being like, this guy and this, this company has, has a bigger purpose than just selling supplements. And it's so powerful to make sure that we, we connect with our audience in that way. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's all over your guys' brand. So that, that's where it comes from. You got the energy and you got the motivation. So you're, you're facing these challenges. You're driving 45 minutes which way, uh, making it happen. When did it... Um, you have one more year in, in the military, so I'm guessing once that year was up, things became 100% focused on, okay, let's grow this company. Yep, so when I transitioned down, I was like, man, well, now I can like I can really dedicate time because now I have like 10 extra hours a day after I transitioned out of the military to grow this brand. Yep. Um, yep. And the best way to describe it at this point in my life was like it was Christmas every morning, but it was like, hell every night because in the morning I was like I have this philosophy it's like all right, I gotta win this day back like I'm down behind I gotta win it back so I'm fighting for it and in the night I was like okay are we gonna make it because at this point with the brand we we were growing so fast organically and we were doing no paid advertising at this point mm -hmm. that we kept running out of inventory we were having like massive issues so at the time, because we have we have 12 week lead times at this point with our manufacturers, uh, we didn't have any terms. So like our payment was when we place a production order, it's 50% down, and then that money is tied up for 12 weeks. And then when that product ships, we pay the remaining on it. So what would happen is, you know, we put our 50% down, we wait 12 weeks, it'd be done, we'd pay the rest, it would ship to us, and then we'd sell out and like. A week and a half mm. so then we and we didn't have enough money like to stack these production orders or buy in bulk so we were slowly like digging our way out of this issue and at that point I was getting nervous because like man like people are going elsewhere because they can't get our product because we're constantly being s selling out of it so like we slowly like, there wasn't anything crazy we did we just like we were pinching pennies we slowly dug out of this hole by just like forecasting inventory, placing larger pr production orders to prepare to get at a point where we're not constantly selling out. And once we dug out of that hole, um, which took like, man, maybe a year and a half, um, we were fine. I could finally see like, the light at that mm. time. You know, every night for like a year and a half, I'm thinking, like, how are we going to do this? 
So like, this, this is sorry. This is 2012, 13, 14. What year is it now that you've been doing this for four years, five years, three years? The, the point I'm talking about right now is 2017. Okay, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you're, you're in your sixth year of uh, around the sixth year of growing this thing. So it's been a six year journey, and you finally are seeing some kind of light, being like, "Yeah, we can, we can, we can make this happen." Yeah. So in 2016, I mean, we went from making in 2015 like 25, 20, 25 thousand dollars in a year. In 2015, 2016 it was 300 thousand dollars. Yeah. So massive jump. Then we went from three hundred thousand dollars to one point six million. How did that feel crossing over that that million dollar mark? Um, you know, it's like I remember looking at Shopify and seeing it, but I was like, "There's still like, yeah, there's still work to do." Like, I wasn't like satisfied. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. "I mean, I mean, cool, we hit a million, but like, mm-hmm. there's so much more that we need to do. 100%. Like, so many more systems that we need to build in place uh, to improving it better." Yeah. So like I. I I never like celebrated that. Why? Why I ask that is is it's a pretty common trend. Is like people got this vision, this mission. They hit the the ten thousand dollar mark a month, the twenty five thousand dollar, the fifty thousand dollar month a mark. And I mean, we're talking more uh, service based stuff, which is which is great. It's kind of like cool, me. But what's next? Like we, we we the vision and the mission is bigger than the revenue, bigger than the sales. The sales yep. propels our it. We pay our staff, we pay our people, we we take care of ourselves, and maybe we'll go on a five day holiday. Um, I know for myself, the more momentum I built, the less I wanted holidays. I'm just like, man, a holiday takes me away from, from that vision, that mission that actually, I love, I love what I do. So why, why take a holiday? So it sounds like you were tapped into that and it's like, great, we're, we're, we're making the sales. We can keep building this thing. We've got the money to pay whomever, but, uh, but it's not about the money. No, it's, it's yeah. not like, um, you know, I, as I, as we've grown, like I haven't taken more money from the business. Yeah. But like what really gets me excited is like when we have live events, like this past weekend we had a live event in LA uh, for the business and it launched at 12 p.m. It was a pop-up shop and at 8.30 a.m. there was a line outside mm-hmm. waiting. People, so like people come in and they tell their story how like the content, the products, the company has like changed their life. Yeah. Like so it facilitated powerful. like this this transformation in their mindset and their diet and their training and it's like those are those reminders like man like these are the lives that we touch like these are the yeah. things that we do like, like that from one standpoint that's why i love the fitness industry and what we do and from another standpoint i love building a team like i love creating a culture with a team that is like so mission and vision focused like everyone here at this at this office our headquarters right now like they live and breathe our mission and vision and what you've been able to do with your with your brothers and with your family, I'm sure they're all they're all part of the team, and and you're probably I mean you're changing so many lives, and it started yeah. with a little idea in a dorm room mixing some some powders together, trying to figure out how to um how to how to create a pre workout. Yeah, I mean the journey's cool. been the journey's been crazy. So so what's next? So now you've got this thing, you've you've hit the 1.3, 1.4. I'm guess uh, you you overcame the fulfillment and the um you know the 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 stocking issue. Uh, I'm sure there's 22 other issues that you're always dealing with, whether that's internal, external, whatever's going on. But that was one of the big obstacles that I'm guessing kind of paved the way or created the um, the platform to get to the next level, which is uh, where you're at now. Yeah. So like at that point, since that point, we've doubled revenue year after year. Cool. Uh, and, and we're on track for 2020 to double 2019's revenue. Um so like I went back to like my military like roots and I was like, okay, like what does the military do really well that makes them successful that I need to implement and that I know in my business? And that's put systems in place, develop subordinate leaders, and build this team that's not necessarily just like managed by me and micromanage, but I have subordinate leaders who are I'm delegating responsibility to that can ultimately help scale this brand. How big is the team now? Uh, we have Seven here we outsource. Um, by the end of the year, we'll have ten full time cool. and staff. Cool. Um, so like that. That's that was like the the intent is like okay, let's let's put systems in place. Um, working with manufacturers and certifications and constantly reinvesting back in. I think one of the things I see see from like my peers, especially in like my space, is like they launch a brand. They go by the car. They launch the brand. They they go by the house. And a lot of it for social. You got to um, get the Lambo. You got to get the Lambo in that IG feed. 
Oh, exactly. And I think it comes down to like, like what we're trying to do is you know, eventually like, yeah, I, I will I have eight of them or take, yeah. but like at this point it's like, we have to keep reinvent. Yeah. yeah. To the point where, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I love that. And again, it, it ties into your vision, your mission. Your vision is so big; it's not, it's not a temporary. Uh, you know, well, let's just. You even said it yourself. You're, you're not paying yourself, you know, million dollars or whatever. You're, you've kept your your pay, at least from what I heard, fairly. Um, you know, the same. You haven't bought the Lambo, um, this and that, because your vision is 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 much bigger than just that, which which always pays off in the end. I just I just interview so many people in the trend. For people's success is literally the exact same. It's just worded differently. And people say different things, but it's just such a fascinating concept to me because it it's fairly universal and 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 you embody it so well. And uh, a lot of our guests also spent time or they have roots in the military. And again, a lot of those philosophies um, that that I study never been in the military, but just from my mid twenties of that whole stoic and the and the whole and the whole philosophy of of you know, short term over long term kind of gains and, and you've got that thing of um going one more and your idea of pain. It's just so universal. So it really inspires me because it, it's 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 amazing what you've what you've done. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. So you've got the so you got that, you're all in on this thing. Um doubling revenue, what's next for bear performance? Um and, and what it is you're doing? What's the, what's the next part of the vision? Is there something that you're kind of like, oh, this would be awesome to have? I know you have the book out, 25 hours a day. We'll have the link down there, and I'll, I'll hear more about that in a second. So other than impacting lives, which I'm guessing is a big part of the vision, what's what's on the horizon for for you and your 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 mission? Yeah, I mean, once I set up, once I play, put these systems in place for bare performance and nutrition to run with, like, people leading and delegating responsibility, um, you know, a lot of the focus went back to, okay, how do, how do we make this brand different? Mm. Uh, being proactive rather than reactive in, in this market that's very it's a competitive. competitive. Yeah, it's a competitive Super market. Competitive. Yeah. So like we, we really built off of like, and we we're like, how at the same time, how do we inspire people to take control of their lives? And that's kind of what the book is a result of the past like two years of what I've been working on doing. Um, but it's like, I know my content can reach a lot of people can reach a, a mass amount. So I started embodying like this, like using my military inspiration and things I did in the military. It's like, okay, I, you know, here I am before I started my brand, this average dude who didn't stand out in anything. And just through like all this work has gotten to a certain point. Well, now how do I show people that like, you know, anyone can do anything they want. And I started doing this through like physical fitness stuff, right? So like, I've always been in like to, to strength training and bodybuilding and long endurance ruck marches and I've done some marathons. Uh, and this past year I was like, you know, I'm gonna do an Ironman. So I just signed, I signed up for it like on a whim. Like it was this day where I just finished a hundred mile ruck march and my feet were like destroyed. And like, I literally, we thought my feet were broken and I was, I thought about going to the hospital. So I'm sitting on the couch and like debating whether or not to go to the hospital or not. And I end up on Iron Man's website somehow. So I sign up. I was like, you know, I'm going to Iron Man. Didn't even know like really what it was at that point. Yeah. But I was like, this is going to be a great opportunity for me to humble myself, test myself. And then show people that like, because as soon as I announced it, you have people saying, You'll, you're never going to be able to do it. Never, never, never. There's always doubters. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the reason like I wanted to do this, the reason I wanted to write the book and it goes back to a story when I was in the army is I remember showing up to PT one day in the army with my soldiers and I saw so much potential in all of them that they didn't see in themselves. Like I saw dudes that were smarter than me. I saw dudes that were, were more in shape than me that had more like natural born leadership abilities in me, but they didn't see that in themselves. Mm -hmm. They thought they had this cap of what they could do. And I wanted to write this book. I wanted to do these things on social. I wanted to push my body to places that it's never pushed before to show people like, you don't have these barriers. You don't have these caps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a living like example of, of what I'm gonna do. So I did the Iron Man first and inspired a lot of people to like jump out of their comfort zone or do things that were like, they weren't used to doing. Yeah. So I finished the Iron Man and I was like, well, what's next? I was like, now I'm going to qualify for Boston, the Boston Marathon, mm. which is a sub-three-hour sub marathon. 
And that's what I'm training for now. My first race is February 16th, which is like, you know, two and a half weeks. It's, it's amazing. It looks like you're breaking the mold or why it's such a big deal. I mean, you don't, you don't look with all respect, of course, a marathoner. You're, you're a big guy. So it's a, it's a big challenge to, to again, prove something. Right. But as soon as I announced that again, it was, you're not going to be able to do it. You can't do it. Of course. And it's just to show it like, you know, you have people, yeah, you have men and women who like live these lives of, of insecurity mm-hmm. and not believing themselves because other people didn't believe in them. Mm-hmm. And I want to do these, these things that push people to say like, go one more. Yeah. Like that's where it all comes together. Go one more past what you think you can do because you can do it. Yeah. You know, you, you have it in you. And um, a lot of the content we build is based off around, around that mindset. You know, all the athletes, all the ambassadors we bring onto to our team embody that mindset, that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I think the people that really connect with our brand, with our vision, with our mission, it is like constantly pushing yourself to improve. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and no one's going to do it for you. It's you chasing that. You going one step past. Never paralyzed by the analysis of it, but just like realizing you have to take massive mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. with risk mitigated to get anywhere. Yeah, I, I instantly resonated. I, I had so much fun going through your stuff because I'm like, yep, instantly, uh, instantly connect. And I think, honestly, I, I, to tie all of this together, and I'm still so um, so touched or inspired by, by the story that started this whole thing off of is some guy gave you some piece of paper. Whether it was true or not doesn't even matter. It was true, but even if it wasn't, that just said, hey, you're in the top 5%. And it sounded like that was the biggest moment of impact for you to be like, hey, I... Maybe I am in the top 5%. What else can I do? And I love your vision, your mission on, on giving basically that piece of paper to people saying, hey, you're in, you can be in the top 5%. Uh, and it kind of sounds like it, it ties the whole thing together from that moment. And it, you're, giving, you're giving that back through your platform and what you're able to, to do for people. of just one slight story shift. And I think we've all experienced something where it was just a paradigm shift. And you're off to the races. It, it, just, it just takes that one and it looks like you're doing that on a daily basis, which is huge. Yep. Yeah. I mean, all these things that have compounded over the years. Um, yeah, it's been a journey, but like you learn from each each one. Yeah. And it's kind of just like, well, what can I do next? That when I look back at next last year, I cringe. Yeah. You know, how, how do I constantly? How do I constantly move forward? Yep. Yeah, it's a it's a common trait. You're embodying that. That's unreal. Twenty five hours a day. Uh, where do they find that? Amazon, best place? Yep, Amazon. We'll, we'll put the link below that. And if you can sort of give the summary uh, of that book, the, the, the pitch, the main idea, I think the title says most of it. Um, really, probably around the idea of going one more, even adding one more hour to your day. But what, what's, what's the main philosophy behind that book? Yeah, so the, the book is like, it's, it's my story that yep. I've kind of talked about. Uh, and lessons learned away through my time as an infantry platoon leader, stories from Ranger School, building the brand, and how I apply these lessons that I've learned that have a massive foundation from the military and applied to business that have helped molded me and my team and have inspired thousands um, through through physical performance and through a mental mindset. It's nice to find a book that's not written by by research because I know there, there is a lot of books that are done. I was going through the uh, reviews of your book both in uh, Amazon CA and Amazon.com. And I think I think it was all five star reviews and people really saying how touched they were by not only the book by your content. So I knew right away I'm just like, man, if we can talk about this book, if you're listening to this and you and you want to search that, we'll have a link below. But if you're listening on iTunes, we we can't hype a link out. So uh, 25 hours a day, go search it on Amazon, and it's it's probably 19 or 25 bucks. And um, I'm I'm a huge huge study a book and find one thing, one nugget, take action on it. And I'm guessing there's going to be about 200 nuggets because just with our little 45 minutes here i got about 12 things from uh from nick so i'm sure the book will be uh will be a very good read and and super actionable um okay so next it sounds like you're inspiring people you want to find ways to inspire them more you're you're still growing the company you're creating kind of a leadership team uh you've got the book anything that's insane insane like something you, you'd like to see realized but you're just like Man, I don't even like talking about that because that's still so far out of reach like what's what's the ultimate ultimate goal or are you not sure you're just growing one day at a time trying to reach as many people as you can uh, I mean ultimate goal like that I want to reach is 100 million dollar company great right it's like 
we, we look at like how, how we want to get there and how we separate ourselves. And I always talk about being like a proactive company in a reactive market. Mm-hmm. You know, like everyone's following trends. And I think one of the things that we, I talk about with my creative director here, our videographer always is like, if it's we want to, we want to lead our own path. Like we want to take the path of most resistance yeah. in a lot of cases. Yeah. Uh, so, so like one of the things we're working on right now is we've been working on it the past months is we're building out, like we have a bear performance nutrition app where people can just go buy stuff. Um, we've been building out a, a personalized workout program in there that's subscription based. Um, that is being programmed my, by my buddy who's actually joining our team. Uh, he's green beret strength mm-hmm. and conditioning certified. Um, so like, it's another piece to help people reach their goals. Yeah. So like, we want to get to the point where like we are focused on education through like supplementation, nutrition, training, motivation through through podcasts, the book, uh, through through social, and then we have resources which are the training platforms, nutrition platforms, and the products. So unreal, so unreal. I love it. I love it. I love. Um... When I when I look at what someone's doing, I'm just like, how do they do it all? And it's just so fun. I mean, obviously, there's a big team aspect, and it looks like that's a big focus of yours. You cannot do it alone. That's one thing that held me back forever. Is I I'm a lone wolf. I could do it myself, and I could for a little bit, but when I could not, everything fell apart. So that was a really big component for me. Sounds like you know you've 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 figured it out. You keep doubling every single year. If you could, and I ask everyone this, and I. I feel like I already know the answer. We got one of three options I've written down here, but if you could leave one thing, um, you know, to, to your either your younger self or a legacy or just one, you know, if we're going to get morbid here on your tombstone, one message that you would just be like, man, I, I, I want to pass this on. This is what I'd like to be, to be known for or leave on this planet or leave my mark. What would that be? So there's like, there's this one saying that I actually came up with because I was, I was talking to people about how to, how to diet. And I talked about it, how people, and this can be applied to diet, this can be applied to anything that requires discipline. Like say for example, someone wakes up and, and they watch a motivational video and they turn that discipline switch on and they go run, they go train. And the next morning they wake up and they're just not feeling it. So they turn that switch off. And the constant life, they're turning the switch on and off, on and off, where it's like they use like discipline as, as an option, right? They can teeter between it. And it's typically the reason that no one ever makes any forward progress because it's one step forward, two step back. So the phrase is break the switch. So it's like you turn the switch on and you literally break it mentally with, with this hammer. So like you never have the option to turn it off. And I think if you, if you actually just like – reinforce this mindset of turning the switch on and breaking it so you can't turn it off and actually like applying discipline to the fact that you did that um that goes a long way and that will hold you accountable to accomplish what your mission is i've been i've been it's so powerful i've been really obsessed probably for the last year because the 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 business got to a place where i'm like okay i started studying the 380 clients we worked with i'm like what was why did these people, they all have the same tools, same resources, everything available to them. But these guys and girls did great. These did okay. And these did not. Like I'm, I'm happy to share always those stats. These did not, but they had everything available. I'm all in with people. What's the difference? So I started asking anyone who's been on the podcast or anyone I know who's always moving forward. I'm like, what's the difference that makes a difference? And one of the really big answers was discipline came up a lot. Like whether you feel like it or not discipline i think behind that was the vision like why are you doing this in the first place so the discipline does isn't a grind it's it's easier to come up with that discipline and then um and and you kind of mentioned the same thing it's breaking that switch um you're, you're disciplined whether you feel like it or not you 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 move forward whether you feel like it or not but i would i would um i i think you'd agree the one thing behind that is vision mission get the vision mission in place set the discipline and don't let off the gas until, well, until until you're, well, you'll never be there. But until you're, just don't let off on the gas. Keep yeah, the I was talking about, I was talking about vision being like, as a business owner, if I understand the vision, but my team doesn't understand the vision, and the and the customers don't understand the vision. Yeah. Well, the the vision is kind of useless. Yeah. 
So it's like, if I have a vision, my team needs to know the vision, our customers need to understand our vision, yeah. then that vision works. Yeah, yeah. It, for anyone listening um, to this or watching this, you know, from a marketing perspective, which is my world, I just love the, the world of marketing and, and copy, the website, I believe it was Bear Performance Nutrition, or I'll leave the link around. What is the website to your, to your Bear Performance? Bear Performance Nutrition or BPN Subs. BPN Subs. I'll leave the links below, but it's a great case study, honestly, a great case study of, of, of great, I'm going to say marketing, and, and you may disagree, but of just great, an awesome way of communicating the vision, the mission, and really creating something bigger than just trying to sell something. And it's, it's, it's literally a prime example of it. Uh, you'll learn a lot just by going through the website. And while you're there, order some pre-workout because I may change my brand as of today. Uh, get the book 25 hours a day. And if, if people want to connect with you and find you, where would they uh, where would they find you? Yeah, on Instagram, Nick Bear, B-A-R-E Fitness. Uh, if you go on YouTube, just search Nick Bear. A bunch of my videos will pop up. Awesome. We'll leave the links below. And, and maybe someone from your team, if you've got two or three you know, pieces of content or something that can really supplement this podcast that, that, that people can check out, I'll have the links for those below as well. Nick, it's been a pleasure. If I could shake your hand, I would. I cannot, but virtually, I just want to say thank you. You, you inspired me today. I'm ready to, um, to break that switch and keep going after it. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. So I don't know when this whole get a job, nine to five, play it safe, think small, and hopefully someday retire with enough time to maybe chase my dreams became okay, but for people like you and me, it's not. I'm Lucas Rubitz, and welcome to The Coaching Channel, where I continue my mission of setting human beings free.